Thank you for tuning in to Manifesting Sons broadcast. Today we would like to share with you an impactful message by Dr. Mark T. Jones Sr. Lord, what is the lesson in this? We hope you enjoy our program. In that season of my life was caused me to second guess my purpose once God got his hands on me and there was a lot of things I did as far as sin and I didn't get like in depth into them but I tasted of enough sin to know what flavor it is but I didn't get in bondage to a lot of it but I tampered with a lot of it and so even in that, God had his hands on me. And so I used to always get mad. I was dealt a bad hand. I was dealt a bad hand. I was dealt a, dealt a bad hand. But then when I start looking back on all the kids that, that experienced some of the things that I experienced, you got, and I don't want to trigger anyone, but you have kids being murdered after they've been violated. You have girls, well, anyway, so you guys understand where I'm going. And so even in that, I realized God had his hands on me, even in the midst of the pain and the traumas, because it could have gone another way. It could have gone a whole different way. But I thank God that even in the midst of attacks, abuse, misappropriations, I was in the palm of his hand and the enemy could not pluck me out. And then even when I got old enough to start making my own decisions, I did start developing a lot of anger. And this is where I want to go with the spirit of anger. Because of everything, the enemy knew that anger would be my safe place. Keep her mad, keep her angry, keep her, you know, on edge, keep her ready to go, you know. And so God was delivering me from the spirit of anger. So you have the enemy justifying why I'm angry, telling me, oh, you should be angry. And then you hear the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. And so because I was angry at my mama and whoever else was involved in making sure I was here, I was angry. I was an angry bird before angry bird became a trademark name. But I was hurting and I was in fear because I was in survival mode. And so that played on the soundness of my mind. So even coming into relationship with Christ, I couldn't even wholeheartedly submit myself to Christ the way I needed to because I feared that even God who was supposed to have been there when I was in the worst positions of my life was supposed to have taken me and saved me and protected me. So a lot of you guys, well, why does God let bad things happen to good people? He still has a plan. All things will work out for the good of those who are called by God. Joseph was put in a pit by his brothers, but at the end of the day, at the end of that, that process, he was supposed to be the redeemer for his family. Hosea married Gomer. God told this man to go marry a prostitute. A ho-ho. Go read it. The, 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 go read it. And it wasn't that God was intimidated by Gomer's lifestyle. He had a purpose. He had a plan. He had, a, not just for her, but he had a plan to redeem a nation. So there's nothing you have experienced that God hasn't already dealt with in the Bible. Look at Rahab. Rahab, of course, we know was a, she was in the red light district. And we know what that means for the mature audience. But 
God used Rahab mightily. And if you do your research, Rahab is in the lineage of Christ. So what have you done to the point where Christ can't be seen through you? How low have you been where you don't feel he can pick you up? And we have to accept that God's plan for us is sure, but we also have to cooperate with that plan that God has. He said, he that has this hope in him, in Christ, will purify himself. So that comes to a place where all the excuses that I made about my trauma childhood and the places where I found sympathy and self-pity in my trauma childhood, because uh, dysfunction has a benefit. Dysfunction has, you, well, why she keep going back to the man and he done gave her 10 black eyes? He done, and he, dysfunction has a benefit. And so a lot of people don't understand why people are stuck in cycles the, the way that they're stuck in cycles. And sometimes what happens is people who've been in cycles know where they've been. They know how to get what they need to get done. But trusting God, how long does that take? Just trust God. Oh, okay. How, do I need to trust him for an hour, a day? Um, 40 years in the wilderness, we would have been forfeited. 40 years, like, I, 40 years, I messed stuff up in the little bit of time I've been here. In 40 years, I would have messed some stuff up. I did, but I thank God for his grace. And I thank God for his mercy. And I thank God for his love that he's shown towards me. But anyway, so you, you, you have people who, they revert back to cycles because they're familiar with it. They know the outcome of that dysfunctional cycle. But when you trust in God, you have to now go through a purging process because now you have to rid yourself of everything that God can't use, which takes you out of your comfort zone. And it messes up the soundness of your mind because now you're trying to be the protector. You're trying to be the sovereign one. You're trying to be omnipotent. You're trying to be the Holy Spirit of your own life. And that was my problem. The God told me, you are trying to do my work. I was trying to be my own protector. Because growing up, I was not protected. And me and God fought and went back and forth and fought. And I'm like, okay, God, like, okay, are you? And then when people think they was doing things and being malicious, God says, and my husband would say, just watch how this play out. I'm like, babe, I don't want to keep watching how this play out. God has made that comfortable for you to accept. He didn't tell me that directly. But because me and my husband are in covenant, what my husband says to me and then the welfare of my soul and my spirit, I have to take heed. So I'm like, okay, one more time. If they try me one more time. Um, and you know what kept me? The refurbished drawers and the Florida Sentinel. That's our inside joke. I went, I got arrested one time and I'm like, I will never get arrested again because I'm not going to be wearing somebody else refurbished drawers. No, no, not my size, not my type, not my color. And orange don't look good on me either. So, um, but anyway, the, I, I'm humorous, but for, so, for those who have been so stoic and church has been that place, hey, husband. But church has been so stoic and so rigid for a lot of you guys, you can't even get free. And so there's freedom and laughter. And I just thank God that I overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the words of my testimony. And if my testimony could be of of help to anyone, if your testimony can be of help, share your testimony. I just share my testimony in private. Well, I'm go tell it, you know, because there is people who are dealing with stuff in public. And my private testimony ain't going to help them. But anyway, so, and it's an example to know that if God brought this person out, if God could deliver Moses out of the hands of Pharaoh and part the Red Sea, what, what would he do for me? Me walking with him, me communing with him, me trusting him. He'll part more than the Red Sea. So anyway, those, that spirit of anger was there. 
And it was messing up the soundness of my mind. It caused me, you know, in certain, you know, my husband, anger makes you preemptive. I had a fear of being abandoned because of the neglect in my childhood. Never really dealt with rejection because you get what you see. Take it or leave it. You love me or you're not. But that abandonment like dormant in our marriage. And when that thing and resentment, abandonment and resentment like dormant in my marriage. And when that thing popped his head up, remember the little things, the little jack in the box? Boop goes the weasel. Baby, Mr. Jones had his hands full. Because as long as we were dating and I was, you know, okay, went to the beat of the music. Went to the beat of the music. And then them red flags boop, popped up. And he, I remember plenty of nights my husband praying, Lord, what did you give me? This, this woman you gave me. <laughs> like for real. You know, I, I remember one time we were in an argument. And uh, I said, well, Belle Biv DeVoe told you not to trust the big button to smile. And you fell for it. That's your fault. You missed the cues. You missed the cues, bro. Don't fault me for that one because your eyes wasn't open. And so that's the humor now. That's the humor now. But the pain and the agony and the tears and the hurts and the fears and the fears and the fears. And the fear of being abandoned once again, that was another reason why I would not let my husband love me because I felt like if I would have allowed him to love me the way he was trying to love me, then it was gonna be too good to be true because that's what I was programmed. It's too good to be true. Don't get comfortable, don't get comfortable. And I was afraid that he was going to abandon me. So because I was afraid of him abandoning me, I had all these reactions to everything, like, I question everything. I question, like, why? The why even had a why. And then the why, why had some whys. And he, and just trust me, Lisa, no, but why? Because I never had to trust anybody before because trust was broken at an early age. So make sure you're solid, make sure you're solid, make sure you have a sound mind when you're going through life make sure that you have allowed God to show you that 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 those things that you're fearing he can handle that nothing will overtake God nothing can come nothing will go into God's presence and override God I have not seen a demon yet and I've been filled with a lot of them. I remember one time my husband, I walked from church when we were at Cathedral of Faith. I got so mad. I walked from 30th and Hannah to Hillsboro and Armenia, barefoot. That, that's how mad I was. All right, 30th and Hannah to Armenia and Hillsboro. We had a revival that night. The spirit of the Lord was high in the atmosphere and I got out and I got mad. And this is what I'm saying. You can be in church and the enemy is waiting for an opportunity to make sure everything that you just received in the spirit goes out the window. So he don't care about you coming to church. He don't care about you listening to your worship. He don't care about you reading your Bible because I know people who read the Bible and they still end up in snares. So the enemy don't care about that. And like I said, he wants us to put up or shut up. If you go name the name of your God, then position yourself, you know, in, in, in a way that you are showing forth the attributes of God. He said, resist, submit to God, resist the enemy, you know. And so we have to understand that the enemy is going to always come. So anyway, back to the story. I'm mad. Anger. Remember I told you anger, fear, fear and anger fuels each other. All right. So for all y'all dealing with domestic violence, find out what they're afraid of. It's fear masking itself with the energy of anger. OK. And so um, I walk from 30th Street in Hannah to Hillsboro in Armenia barefoot with stockings on. By the time I got home, my stockings looked like 
just like fishnets. They were stockings, but by the time I got home, they were fishnet. So my husband, if you know where, um, where the Starbucks is, right past um, Central, my husband was sitting there waiting on me with the kids in the car, and he pulled up, he said, Lisa, get in the car. I said, no. Lisa, traffic is coming. Lisa, get in the car. No, I'm not getting in the car with you. And I said some other unnecessary things, but I'm not getting in the car with you. So I'm thinking he gonna be waiting at the next corner. Whew. Your boy left, and I'm thinking, okay, he go, I, he'll, I see him up there where the save a lot is. He, he give me another city block. Babe, I got to save a lot, got ready to walk across that bridge, and I'm looking, looking for that car to come up. No Mark Jones in sight. So now that done fueled my anger even more. He done left me, that's not right, and I'm walking down the street. So people are passing by, you need a ride? No, no. So I get home, I go get home, stood at the door, and I say, if this man sleep, I'ma get him. That ain't the night I set the bed on fire, so no. But this man was so comfortable and unbothered. I say, what? And that night I'm tired, child, I'm tired, I was, I was, I was tired. <laughs> I was tired. So I couldn't really put up a fuss or a fight. But the next morning, and we, you know, okay, this is funny, but not funny. We didn't argue during the daytime. We, we didn't argue during the daytime. But baby, when that sun started going down, we argued over the garbage can bags. We argued over the squirrel on the tree. We argued over everything that didn't have anything to do with anything. That's how turbulent this relationship was. And so we argued and argued. But in that, that fear and anger started breeding resentment. So I'm living with this man for seven years now with his children. But I got so much resentment in my heart towards him. And I remember one day the Holy Spirit said, deal with that. But I didn't know how to deal with that. So it came off in the form of an argument. But the long story short, it was in my heart. And so the enemy was planning my mind and I couldn't execute intercession. I couldn't pray for my marriage. I couldn't pray for me. I, it was just one of those things where my mind was so disconnected from my process until I just felt like it was a free-for-all. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen until deliverance came. And I remember one night I was so angry with, just angry. I can't even tell you why I was angry. I was asleep one night. You remember this? I was asleep one night, and we got into an argument, and he turned over and went to sleep. That ain't the night I set the bed on fire. <laughs> I bet everybody's like, why she keep saying that? Because like I said, it was many of those nights. But I'm sleep. I was so open. The walls of my life was open. Because one, I wasn't submitted to my husband. In covenant, but not submitted. I was angry. I didn't want to deal with nobody in authority. I had an authority issue. Could nobody tell me nothing? And so that night, I fell asleep, and I got attacked in my sleep. And my husband woke up out of his sleep to try to figure out why I'm tussling and, 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 and fighting and growling and everything in my sleep. And... I was fighting a demon, and that demon was rage and anger and murder. I was open because I allowed the excuses 
of not guarding my mind, not renewing my mind to now manifest even in my dreamscape. And the enemy will violate you in your dreams, sex dreams, murder dreams, whatever, whatever he can do to infiltrate your soul, even in the most vulnerable state, he will do that. And so I'm in my sleep and I'm fighting uh, these demons and they were coming and one grabbed me by the throat. And when he grabbed me by the throat, I couldn't say Jesus because normally if I'm sleeping, I'm bad. I'm like, in the name of Jesus. And I wake up out of my sleep. This particular night, because I opened, I opened the door. I gave territorial rights to that spirit. Y'all looking at me like an alien with two heads. I opened the door. And... I was in a fight for my life in my bedroom next to my husband who was trying to do everything he could to make sure that I was okay, but he couldn't stop that attack from coming over my life. So when I woke up, I was hoarse for three days. I had a scratch from my, from my throat here all the way down my chest. So it started as a single line from both sides here and then in the middle of my chest, there was like a claw down my chest. And then right here, I had scratches on my jaws. When I woke up, he woke up and I heard him praying. He turned the light on and he said, what did you open yourself up to? And I'm crying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And he said, did you pray before you went to bed? No. We had argued, and I, he went on ahead and prayed and went to sleep, but I didn't. I didn't close those doors. And so that was the indicator that you can't be walking around here thinking because you're in church, because you this and that and the third, the enemy won't set up camp. My mind, my mind was so contorted in church, but in opposition with the church. So I know what it's like to be, and that's why I'm not debating with anybody on Facebook, because I know the ramifications of dishonor. Y'all have heard my, babe, how much time I got? Cause I gotta make this, I, I haven't even got, huh? Just finish, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna give y'all the OLID in a minute, but I just need to help somebody, all right? I'm not just a pretty face, you know? I, I, I understand that, that there's things that's deep within us that's suppressed. And remember I told you before 2022 ended, the Lord told me I'm taking you through some deep deliverances. Some deep deliverances. Yeah, you've been delivered of a lot, but there are some deep deliverances. Me, the prophetess, the apostles, what? All of that. All of that. I talked to Kanitha on a regular basis, and we've talked, and, and I've sh we've shared some things with each other, and it's like, okay, I already see what this is. And one thing I love about her, we get down in the trenches. We neck it, let's go. Cack, whatever, let's go. So I'm not above deliverance or correction or anything because the enemy don't see title. He don't care about that. He don't care about positions. He needs a legal, he needs a legal open door to operate and have you around him manifesting. So anyway, I, I, I went through that whole process and God started working on me. There was another situation I opened myself up to a relationship that I shouldn't have opened myself up to, being married. And God began to dry everything up around me. I was working at the bank. I was making good money at that time. I couldn't see a penny. It's like my, my bank account like was just my, it's like God said, I'm not going to bless a mess. I'm not blessing a mess. And everything around me began to dry up. Everything around me began to dry up. And I remember one night I was asleep and I woke up. My husband was asleep again, unbothered. And I looked up at the ceiling 
And in the ceiling, I saw trees and rivers and flowers and all this stuff on his side of the room. It's like God took the room and divided it. This your side, that's his side. So I'm laying there like on my back looking like, like I'm watching a movie. And I see everything over here flourishing. Over here, I saw thorns, thistles, dry ground. I ain't seen not a flower, a split of grass or anything. And I began to cry. I, I began to cry because I knew I was out of sync. In church, but out of sync. Read my Bible and out of sync. I had opened doors. And in that open door, I wasn't solid because I opened that door. And if there's a crack in any part of your foundation, you are not solid. So the enemy was playing with the soundness of my mind in every part of my elevation. And every time I knew that it was the enemy was at every place of elevation with an opportunity for me to forfeit, for me to just walk away and go back into the things of the world. And I was in a warfare between the world and being called to the kingdom. My mind wasn't right. My mind wasn't right. And so one of the things I realized that in Psalms 119.71, it said it was good that I was afflicted, that I may learn of your statues or your statues of your ways. And it wasn't until I realized that these afflictions were not because of God really doing anything to bring me harm. He needed to tighten me up, to show me some things. He needed me to not be judgmental. So when I almost messed up my marriage, he had to take judgmental off the table. When he showed me how my mind was going 95 south, he had to show me how to walk in compassion and empathy with people who are going through different things and to be patient with people. Because when you get into the church, sometimes you can get a little self-righteous. You can get a little indignant because that's their problem and uh, I, that's beneath me. No, baby, reach down and come up. Re come on, no, you can't stay there. You, can, you can't stay there. You can't stay there. I've been there. And the only difference, I tell the women, I used to go into the prisons with prison ministry, thanks to LaKanya for opening that amazing door. But I would tell the women all the time, the only difference between you and I, y'all got caught and sentenced. But there's no difference because some of you guys are wearing blue and got a free mind. There's a lot of people I'm going back to at my church at 3102 East Lake Avenue. They're not wearing blue, but they're in their minds. They're in prison. And the women will look at me and they would just stand. I said, so that's the difference. Y'all obviously in captivity. The people out there, it's not so obvious. I say, there's a lot of people that are out these, these gates that are in captivity to their mind, in their mind. And so we begin to work with that, those mindsets. A lot of us have mindsets that goes contra contrary to what God is saying. And so making sure you're solid. Let me speed it up. Let me speed it up because I want y'all to get out and I don't want y'all to penalize me. We can't deliver ourselves. We need a deliverer. Because if we could deliver ourselves, we would have done it before we got into bondage. And the Bible tells us not to be entangled. There's a lot of things God keep having to redo in you because you take for granted the grace on your life. The grace. I remember I had a dream. I, God deals with me in a lot of dreams. And I was in improper, living, living raggedy. And these two twins was chasing me, chasing me in this dream. I ran up a hill, and I'm, you know, getting up the hill and hiding behind the tree laughing, hee-hee-ha-ha. -ha. 
and they stopped at the bottom of the hill. And I heard them say, we're not chasing her anymore. And I'm sitting behind a tree waiting for them to come so I can get up and run. And I heard a voice in my dream telling me, that, well, their name was Grace and Mercy. God will talk to you if you're listening. God will bring you warning if you're listening. So by the time we get our jump bus, don't say that we had nobody there because we've bypassed everything that God was trying to do to make sure that we were in safety. So I'm in this dream trying to be slick in my dream. You know, it's a shame when you can sin in your dream and you think you're slick in your dream. And I'm trying to finagle in my dream. And these two twins, Grace and Mercy, said, we're tired. We're done. We're not doing it anymore. I woke up out of that dream immediately, and I laid there, and I cried. I'm playing with the grace that God has given me over my life. He's been merciful to me. He's kept me from being in situations that, yeah. So I'm grateful that even in the midst of what was going on, God was there to pick me up and deliver me and, and rescue me from that place so that the devourer did not have his plan. So also, as far as being solid, we have to make sure that we are offense free. We are offense free. And you've heard your apostle say, offense is an invitation, not a subpoena. And a lot of us are even in this house today, offended. You've dressed it up, but you're offended. You dressed it up, but you are still offended. You're offended with God. You're offended with man. You're offended with yourself. You're offended all the way around. And the Bible says that a three-fold cord is not easily broken. And if you got all these offenses just swirling around in your life, you have to make the decision to let it go. The Bible said whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And unforgiveness is so, it's when people are walking in unforgiveness and bitterness, it's so stealthy. I remember telling my husband, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. How did that turn out? I remember saying things out of my mouth because offense, unforgiveness, bitterness, and grudge holding was my puppet masters. And I would hold a grudge just like these braids are holding on to my hair. I would hold one. Because in my family, holding grudges was passed down. Holding offense was passed down. And I posted the other night about generational curses. When you are called and destined to break generational curses, all hell is going to break loose. Because everything that you're familiar with... Everything that you're angry with is now going to come and oppose you. Why? Because it's more of them in bondage than the one that's outside of the bondage. So for all of you that's been praying for your families and trying to believe for your family and the hell and the warfare has intensified, let me give you a little nugget that I had to learn the hard way. If you stop praying for them because nobody else is praying for them, who's going to pray? If you're closing the gates over your families, and it's, you're working, not only are you closing the gate over your family, but you're trying to close the gate over your own life. You're going to get tired of some things with your family sometime. You're going to feel like, uh-uh, I'm done. I'm checking out. Alienate yourself from your family. But I'm going to send out a decree. If you stop praying for your family, who's going to pray, intercessors? Who's going to stand in the gap for them to bring restoration? You guys that have been coming to this house for so many years and so many times, you have the tools. Your family members may not have what you're getting, 
Go and be the deliverer for your family. They may not even like you. They didn't like Joseph. They put him in a pit. They despised his coat. But at the end of the day, guess what? God positioned him so he can go back and rescue them in a famine. And some of your families are in a spiritual famine. They are drying up on our watch. There's offenses in our families that nobody don't even know why they mad. Well, why are you mad? I asked one of my family members, well, what you mad for? Can't give me no answer. That's not my mad, boo. That's your mad. But before I would wallow, well, why they mad? And I would go into this place of trying to make it right, to make them not mad at me and walking in guilt and regret. And God told me, no, 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 no. You're allowing yourself to be entangled. Let that go and just continue to pray. So in order to be solid, you got to make sure you have a sound mind and that you are obedient to what God is saying and that you are offense free. And offense comes from insecurity rooted in fear. Well, what they meant by that? Ain't nobody going to talk to me any kind of way. Fearing that somebody's going to say something to you slick. The fear of being taken advantage of creates offense. Unrealistic expectations of people creates offense. Traumas, wounds, scars, past issues, repressed issues, it creates offense. Holding on to things too long. How many of you guys have had milk in your refrigerator over three months? You just nasty. Don't feed me. Somebody raise their hand. Now we laughed and be like, no, three months, that milk is old, throw it out. That's common, that's simple, that's easy to process. But what about the, the words, the conversations, the, the things that was done, the offenses, the, the wrongdoings? Because ain't nobody finna drink no clabbered milk. I don't like cottage cheese. I don't like cottage cheese. So if we have enough common sense and a wisdom to get rid of old food, food out of our refrigerators and pantries, why can't we do that with our soul? Why can't we be just that diligent in getting, oh, child, that, that outfit is outdated. I've got to get rid of that. That's, that's out of date. We'll get rid of clothes. We get rid of furniture. We get rid of food. We get rid of all this stuff that's old, but we still holding on to what Treby said in the hallway 12 years ago. Well, y'all know Treby said, um, and, um, and, um, and, um, and, 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 and Treby. Why? Why is it stuck? It's playing with the soundness of our mind because it creates paranoias and make us think that everybody is against us. Also, offenses come from assuming a negative intent. I went to somebody this morning and made sure that because I saw something that I thought the enemy twisted, I had to say, hey, are we in good standing? Are we okay? And the person said, yeah, we're in good standing. Why do you ask? And I told her why, huh? And I said, because I just want to make sure, you know, because before I would look, you look at me, I look back at you. Eh, I bought a problem, your mom ain't got no TV. Eh, <laughs> what you looking at? You know, we've all been there like, why they looking at me like that? And so my husband told me one time, well, you gotta be looking at them to be looking at you, look at you. <laughs> Made a lot of sense. Made sure I didn't walk in no fence. But again, the intents of something. Are we dealing with what we're dealing with now? Is it something that our mama said? And now this sister may say the same phrase, and now we're triggered. There's nothing wrong with being aware of our triggers. Oh, that triggered me. That triggered, there, there's a lot of things that have triggered me, but now I have to take responsibility. He that had this hope in him purifies himself. That triggered me. But I'm not in that dispensation of time anymore. God has did a lot of healing in me. God has brought forth it. I'm not going to forfeit and go back into that muck and the mire and allow myself to get entangled. I don't allow people to tell me certain things about other people because I know I have an assignment. And I don't tell people who I'm offended with or mad at. The Bible said be angry. 
Because, and, and this is the thing, we don't know where the line of demarcation comes. Well, I'm mad. I'm mad. What did the Bible say about mad and anger? Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Deal with it. You know, it talks about bringing your, if you're offended with somebody, you go to, most of y'all, and I'm going to say y'all in my most hoodish grammar, y'all be tripping. Y'all weird. Y'all funny, though. Wait, April, that. Y'all funny. But, um, no. If, so, if you're offended with somebody, you go to them. There are so many messes in the church that could be resolved if two people did what they know to do. Because they know everybody else should do it that way, but they won't. I had a situation a, a little over a year or so ago, two women here going at it, I don't know why. They both text me simultaneous. I'm getting two text messages coming in. This one's saying, and I'm gonna drag her through the church. Whoa, 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 not at the church, mama. Like, wait a minute. I'm gonna drag her, and this one's saying, she don't know about me, cause this, da, da, da. And I'm sitting there with, with my phone, and I showed my husband, I'm like, she's texting me this. She's texting me this. Dang, prophetess. Wait, whoa, hold on, prophetess. Hold on, prophet. Whoa, hold on, hold on. So I told my husband, I'm going to call both of them right now. I, well, first I merged the text message. Hey, can we meet? Can we meet? Because y'all done drug me into this. Well, why you brought her in? Because y'all, I'm in my home trying to be with my husband because it was that time for me. And you interrupted my mood. So now you got to deal with what I got to do. You interrupted my plans. If you didn't want me in it, you shouldn't have brought me in it. So my husband's telling me, put the phone down. I'm like, no, I'm trying to mediate this matter before they tap the church. Because did you just see what she said? She finna drag her. And she don't. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Can we meet? One says, sure, first lady. We can meet. The other one said, I don't want to meet. Well, why did you bring me in this? Why did you bring me in this? Well, I thought you was going, no, 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 sweetheart. No. No. And no. And if you're listening, it's still the same. You drug me in it. My, God, my job was to bring mediation to the situation. So the next day, I scheduled a three-way call. The one person said, I'm ready to meet. I'm calling. The one picked up. Don't say nothing until I get the other person on the phone. Phone is ringing. They text me. If such and such is on the phone, I ain't answering. I said, all right. I've already realized that I'm not your leader. You, you made it that day that there's nothing I can say to you. There's no correction that can come. So delete, delete the whole trade of messages. Prayed for them in my own time and went on. And I say all that to say this, there's a lot of things that goes on in here and y'all got privy of the offenses of other people. Bring them together, bring them together. And don't form an opinion. Because normally, the person, you know, when you, when you go to, in the court, I was in court not too long ago, and not for nothing I did. Um, I'm good now. Um, I was in court, make it fast. Um, and I made a statement. And, and they asked me, you know, a question. And I was like, well, so, that's not admissible in the court of law. Hearsay in somebody else's statement is not admissible in a court of law. So why are we allowing it in the church? You will, leak, you will lose a case if you don't have enough evidence. But in the church, we conjure up stuff. Well, yeah, I remember she made me mad in the kindergarten too. Yeah, mm, let's get her. Let's get her. People that don't even like each other would gang up on you just to find an offense. But make sure you are solid. A sound mind, offense free. Again, offense is not an invitation. I mean, it's not a subpoena. It's an invitation. You choose where to put your mind and park your thoughts. Has everything always been good? No. But I have to go now and be like, 
if I let this ponder in my mind, I've already been in the depths of pain from this and this trauma, I can't afford that no more. When you've been out of bondage and you feel good being free, you are intentional about not getting tangled back up and stuff. You need to make sure, L, that your lifestyle is in a non-compromising place. Non-compromising lifestyles. And I already said it earlier, you know, I'm not going to get into that. But make sure your lifestyle, because the enemy is trying to find any way he can get in. Through your mind, through your genitals, through your ears, through your, he don't care where he get in at. He wants to set ground contaminate the situation, and have you forfeit your destiny. That's the whole goal. Be not ignorant of the enemy's devices. God said he's working on freedom. The enemy works on keeping you in bondage. We, we can't be that dumb to be that dumb. But we're smart, but we're dumb. All right? So, and also I, intentional in integrity. I can't walk through my husband's integrity because... I have to be tested and tempted and tried on my own things. And like I said earlier, time and opportunity will show us what we all believe. Everybody full of faith in the controlled environment. I believe God, I trust God, and da-da-da-da. But when they get outside, it's, they body, 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 body. I'm like, whatever, whatever. You want to go to the hotel? You want to do that? Whatever you want to do, we're going to do. Opening yourselves up to so many things and so many devices, and then wondering why church ain't working for me. Because we're trying to uh, bring in too many cattle in back into the, into the, to the little corral. And D, delivered. When you are delivered, you are set free. You are set free. Anybody ever bonded out of jail? Don't raise your hand. When that, when that gate open and they give you your property, listen, that's a good feeling. That is a good feeling, baby. Look, you take that. Because when I got arrested, I had, on, um, I had on a hair. They told me I had to take it off. At least I was cute, though. But I had to take my hair off my head. I'm like, ah, no, I need my ponytail. It's funny now, but it wasn't funny. But um, a lot of times people don't learn from their mistakes and consequences. And you wonder why, well, why they keep doing the same thing? Oh, some people don't learn. You, you ever seen a child, you just beat the brakes off of them? Just beat them, just beat them. And they tell you, that don't hurt. You woe out, tired, you about to sweat, you done lost 20 pounds beating that child, and they look at you and like, that don't hurt. Something is wrong. There's a dis, but some people are not corrected through punishment. Some people are corrected through love. And it's the love of God that draws us. So if you just stand to your feet right now. Visit us for one of two services on Sunday mornings, eight o'clock and 10.30 a.m. There are so many ways to partner with us. If God is using this ministry to impact your life and you would like to reach others by sowing a seed, text the word GIVE to 754-210-8654. Visit www.centerformanifestation.com to stay connected with us. Also, visit us on YouTube at Manifestations Worldwide. This is the season for the manifestation of the sons of God. Be blessed and manifest.